Hello and good morning. Welcome back to another vlog. It is Friday and I successfully got up, got showered, got myself ready before Steven had to get ready for work, which used to be the norm, but lately in pregnancy, I'm taking like every second of sleep I can get. So usually getting ready with Grace in the morning, it was really nice to just have a little time to myself while I'm getting ready. Now I'm gonna cook some breakfast for Grace and I and we will get our day started. I think we have raspberries or blueberries. Raspberries. Which would you like? Okay. And see how I'm outside. I can use my ice powers to freeze the plate. She's gonna freeze the plate? No. How about this frozen ice? And boom. Whoa, it's frozen. And look, your milk is frozen too. All right, so you want some mushroom in your egg. What about onion? Keeping our outing for today very simple. We're just gonna go walk around the block for a little bit. Got all sweaty just just putting the laundry in so i'm trying to de-sweat my face a little bit before i vlog here honestly maybe i should just take my sweatshirt off it's not even hot today but like in pregnancy it does not take much for me to just get like sweaty and overheated so here we are <laughs> all right so i got grace down for a nap i got uh really the last load of baby laundry started i thought i was done like i i thought we had gotten all the boxes and then we had washed the few things that we bought um and then a couple days ago stephen pulled out another box from the garage and he was like have you been looking for this like are we missing this one and i realized there was a whole nother box of baby clothes especially like small sized baby clothes that i had saved from grace and that we didn't find when we first took out the boxes so so we've got uh we've got even more than i thought we had we are definitely all set on the baby clothes front um but yeah it's been a pretty fun easy chill day at home it's like one o'clock now grace is napping and i thought now would be a good time to sit down and just do a little pregnancy chat talk about where we're at because i am now nine months pregnant which is freaking wild but also like i i'm so so glad to be nearing the end because i'm definitely starting to get pretty uncomfortable pregnancy is just so hard on the body like even a fairly easy pregnancy like i feel like mine has been it's just it's a lot especially like getting to the end now on the home stretch back pain is pretty constant now the pelvic pressure is really intense especially if i'm like moving around a lot i feel like i definitely have the like pregnant lady waddle now when I walk and my belly just feels so big. I have round ligament pain a lot, which is like this pain and discomfort at the front of your belly. Speaking of my belly, um, definitely lots of new stretch marks, although they're pretty light in color. So I feel like they're not as visible as some of the ones that I got during my pregnancy with Grace. I also feel like my belly and just my body in general is so veiny right now. Like at my belly, I feel like you can see all of the veins going around my stomach and those just kind of like mix in amongst the stretch marks. And my appointments are weekly now until the end. So I'm seeing a lot of my doctor in the next couple weeks. And I was telling my doctor this the other day like even with you know the discomfort that I am having I feel like I'm I'm doing pretty well I feel like I'm definitely better off than I was at this stage during my pregnancy with Grace I remember feeling like really really struggling near the end so all things considered I think I'm doing I'm doing pretty okay I also feel I feel like I'm gonna miss being pregnant a little bit even with the bad stuff like just feeling her move and always having her with me. And I don't know, there's also the element of like, as someone who's had a lot of body image struggles in my life, for most of my life, I felt pretty like disconnected from my body. I've tried to ignore it and hide it. I've never felt more 
connected and in tune with my body than I that really than I do right now. I can see myself like looking back on this time and you know romanticizing it a little bit and missing all the movement and the connection. And I think part of that too is that this is probably our last baby. We're leaving the door open in the sense that you know I'm getting a c-section but I'm not getting my tubes tied and that was an option that my doctor gave me. Like we're pretty sure that we're done but not so sure that I want to make that like final final decision. But in my head like I'm I'm treating this as probably my last pregnancy. So I feel like I'm cherishing it a little bit more. And you know, if we do decide to have a third, we want to have a pretty sizable gap. We're definitely done for the time being. Um, so actually one of the things that I talked with my doctor about is at my six week postpartum checkup, cause I'm gonna have a two week and a six week because of the C-section. At my six week postpartum visit, I'm gonna get an IUD and that lasts for seven years. So definitely a more long-term but not permanent birth control option. Sorry, camera died. Um, but yes, IUD. And then what's nice about that too is if we do decide that we want a third during that time, I can get it removed at any time before the seven years is up. But yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely having the mindset of like, this is probably the last time I'm gonna be pregnant. And I think that's helping me cherish it a little bit more. I think that's, um, uh, that's pretty much everything. It's kind of where I'm at. We've got an ongoing list of baby things that we want to get done before she's here that we've been, you know, slowly but surely getting through really over the past couple months, especially on the weekends. We'll like dedicate some time to at least a couple projects, at least a couple things on the list. Honestly, this time it's less like, you know, so many things have to be prepped and put together. There's a little bit of that, but more of it is like, we want to get our house in order, do all of the things that we know are probably going to get put off, like, you know, cleaning out the fridge and taking care of all the extra extra little clutter piles around the house and really just trying to get like our house and our life to a nice clean slate before uh, newborn and postpartum chaos. I guess it's not really chaos. It's kind of like a quiet chaos. I don't want to call it chaos. I guess it's more of the, the newborn and postpartum shakeup that's going to change things, change our routine, change our lives. But I'm really excited for it. And I'm, I'm really excited to meet her. I'm really excited for Grace to meet her. Like we just, we spend so much time talking about it now because it's so top of mind for Grace. Like whenever we're playing, she's like, and I'm going to share this toy with baby sis. And I want to show this to baby sis. And I made this drawing for baby sis. All right, before I head back downstairs, uh, let's, let's do a little bump shot. All right, here is the nine month bump shot. How crazy that there's a baby in there. Like, I know that, I know, I do know that. But she is, she is really in there and getting bigger by the day. So she will not be in there for, for too, too much longer. But yeah, there is the bump in all its veiny and stretch marky glory. <laughs> My belly button hasn't popped out though. Like it's almost kind of flat, but definitely like still there somewhat. And it never popped when I was pregnant with Grace. So I'd kind of be surprised if it did. I think it's just going to end up flattening as this continues to expand. All right, just tidied up down here real quick. And now before I go just sink into the couch for like an hour and read my book, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Factor. For lunch today, I had a tofu enchilada bowl from Factor and it was so good, so flavorful. Factor is the perfect solution for fast premium meals without the need for cooking. So they deliver fresh, never frozen, ready to eat meals right to your doorstep. And Factor's team of of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. And like I said, they are delicious. They're quick. They're ready to eat in just two minutes and totally fuss free and mess free. Factor eliminates the hassle of all the prepping, the cooking, the cleaning up. You just heat it up, enjoy an amazing, delicious chef prepared meal, and you can get back to doing what you really love this spring. Factor has been amazing for me in sticking to a routine and just eating out less especially lately in pregnancy, because I I just do not want to cook every day, but a, you, a girl's got to eat. And being able to count on some factor meals in my fridge, knowing it's food that's going to make me feel good and that I'm going to love. So, so nice. And factor has even more add-ons to keep your fridge super well stocked. They have snacks, smoothies, juices. The protein shakes are my favorite, just like a perfect 
quick fuel up option. I had one for breakfast this morning. I am a Factor fangirl, highly recommend. <laughs> Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use my code Sierra50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next box. That's code Sierra50 at factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. So thank you Factor. I'm gonna be thinking about that tofu enchilada bowl for a while, it was so good. And now it's couch potato time. <laughs> I'm reading Shawshank Redemption, which I think is one of the best movies of all time. So I've been wanting to read the book and I'm, as you can see, I'm actually reading a physical version of it, a real book. Everything else I've read this year has either been on my Kindle or an audiobook. Reading a real book the old fashioned way. And there is something nice about like having a book in your hands, but I'm not gonna lie. I hate to say this, but I do kind of miss like having my little percentage read in the bottom left corner and the ease of, of skipping between pages, but it's good to switch it up every now and then. Um, I, I just started this book last night, so just getting into it. It's my second ever Stephen King book after I read uh, 11, 22, 63, and I loved it so much. I added uh, quite a few Stephen King books to my reading list. So this one was pretty high up there and it's really short. It's a novella. So I think it's only like a hundred pages. Whereas the, uh, the first Stephen King book that I read was incredibly long. So it's a good change of pace. So cozy in here. Mommy, can I come in? You wanna come in my playhouse? Okay, mommy. <laughs> I can only be in here. Come on in. Hey, hey Gracie, where do I can do it? Oh, oh, mommy, can we go to the park? So? Really? How about to Disneyland? To Disneyland? Let's go. Okay, but you gotta drive, because I'm just a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm in Grace's playhouse because after she woke up from her nap, we started playing a game where she's mommy and I'm Grace. Oh, I have to go get in the car? Okay. Did you pack our bag? Okay. And she's wearing one of my shirts too. To Disneyland. We're there. Oh, wow. He's calling again? Okay. Mommy, this time it will be a blue crab. A blue crab this time? On his pinky toe? Okay. Hello, Prince Eric. This is King Triton. <gasps> a blue crab is biting your pinky toe? And you need someone to help you? Okay, I'm sending Grace right now. Ariel. Oh, sorry. Not Grace. Ariel. Ariel's on her way. Yeah, she can swim super fast. Don't you worry. Okay, bye-bye. All right, go help him. We've now ended up playing a game where I am King Triton, and I'm fielding calls from Prince Eric, who needs help in... A various number of situations, all of which seems to involve crabs biting him. You helped him? That's great! Well, I'm sure that problem will never happen again. The end. Oh, he's calling again! I thought that was the end! Oh, right. Hello, Prince Eric. Toddler games are fun. <laughs> it's a little after five now, so Stephen's gonna be wrapping up work soon. And then I have book club tonight. So I'm gonna be heading over to my mom's house for that. Sometimes we do it virtually, sometimes we do it in person. It's Prince Eric. Oh, it's Prince Eric. It's ringing again. Hello. Oh, Prince Eric. That sounds so painful. Are you okay? All right. I am on my way to book club. Stopped at the grocery store to pick up a couple things for a little cheese board spread. Um, and before I get going here, I want to do like a little March reading wrap up. I'm going to rank the six books that I read and give little like bite-sized non-spoiler reviews. Also, if you want more reading content from me, you can follow me on Goodreads. I'll link it in the description. But okay, the best book that I read this month, I gave it four and a half stars, was Paris, the memoir by Paris Hilton. I found this book so interesting. It was interesting from the beginning, but it really took a turn when she started talking about her experience in the troubled teen industry, everything that she went through, which was just so heartbreaking and so honest and vulnerable and detailed. It got like hard to read at some points, but I'm really glad that she's able to, you know, speak up about this and what happened to her and advocate and make sure that, you know, this stops happening to kids. It does jump around 
around a little bit but also she, from the beginning she frames this book as like through the lens of her ADHD so I, I it makes sense really amazing book I think one of the best memoirs I've ever read highly recommend and then the second best book that I read this month which I gave four stars was Sapiens a brief history of humankind which is exactly what it says in the title it's a, a non-fiction book covering from you know when homo sapiens first evolved and like early human hunter-gatherer societies all the way through to today and also looking forward to the future of our species which i found incredibly fascinating and i exclusively read this one as an audiobook i find that with like more dense non-fiction reads i have an easier time digesting everything through an audiobook and it was great like it, it's very much a, a drive-by overview obviously given the span of time that it's covering but it goes through this kind of like broad historical overview and also brings up more interesting and philosophical questions that it really does dive into of like why why humans are the way that we are. Why did we develop concepts like colonization and sexism and racism? Even things of like the, the concept of money and credit and how that was like really a driving force in our technological advancements and the industrial revolution. And then at the end, it got very like introspective about, okay, now we have all this technology and is this going to cause us to bring the end to ourselves? Maybe. Excellent book, a little dense, like I said, but I really treated it like a podcast and just listened to the audiobook over the course of like a couple weeks. In third place, I also rated four stars, Darth Plagueis, Star Wars novel. This desperately made me want to rewatch episode one, which I did as soon as I finished it. And I feel like I viewed it in a, a whole new way because it covers a lot of like what was going on leading up to that and the plans that the Sith were formulating and like how Palpatine overtook Darth Plagueis. It was just great storytelling, great Star Wars lore. The only thing, and this I feel like happened to me anytime I read a Star Wars book or really just like any fantasy book I find myself getting a, a little like glossy through all of the different alien names and the species and the long sci-fi name after long sci-fi name I'm like ah all right you're, lo you're losing me here <laughs> then we have the book that was our book club read this month hang the moon by Jeanette Walls I gave this three and a half stars I thought it was it was good but not great and not really anything that's gonna stick with me it's a, a drama about a woman and her town during the prohibition era and trying to survive and continue her family legacy while also like dealing with all the things that hold you back as a woman and there's all this tragedy unfolding around her it had good bones it just never really got great like kept waiting for it to pick up and it just never really did but it, i'm excited to talk more about it tonight hear everyone else's thoughts um another book i gave three and a half stars but would say i enjoyed a little bit less than hang the moon was beach read by emily henry this was my third Emily Henry book. And honestly, I, I have yet to enjoy one as much as I did the first one. I first read Happy Place and I do think that's a great book, but also I think that I had a much more positive view of it because it was my first Emily Henry book. And I was like, wow, these characters feel so unique and I love the setting and I love the dialogue. And then the other two books by her that I've read kind of just feel like the same thing repackaged. And it was a good book. You know, I, I definitely enjoyed it and I felt invested in the characters. Emily Henry's good at what she does, but I think for me, it it's just lost a lot of its charm because it all kind of feels the same. It feels like I've been here before. Let me know your thoughts if you've read anything by her. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on an Emily Henry hiatus for a bit. It just feels a little stale. I want something new. Okay, and in last place, the only book I read this month that I would say I did not like was Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I'd give it two stars. It's a, a vampire werewolf romance story, which to be fair, is not my usual cup of tea. So if that is your thing, you might love this. And I, I, try, I did try to go into this with a very open mind, trying to expand my horizons. And Kenzie wanted me to read this one with her, but it was it was just not for me. Like the, the relationship made me cringe. I wasn't rooting for them at all. The world didn't feel like really lived in. It wasn't something I could sink my teeth into. Uh, Ah, ah. Speaking of sinking your teeth into, there were some things I just could not get past of like mixing of the vampire werewolf stuff and the sexy time scenes. They were very intermingled 
And like I said, I tried to have an open mind, but reading those scenes did kind of make me want to crawl out of my skin. And I was very put off. Although I, one positive thing I will say, there's a mystery element to this book that I think is well done. And that's kind of what kept me in. And I thought the way that the, the mystery element wrapped up in the climax was, was good and interesting. But uh, I just think that vampire, werewolf, spicy books are not for me and that's okay. I tried something new. It didn't work out, but if you've read Bride by Allie Hazelwood and you loved it, I'm very happy for you. I think everyone should have their things that make them happy and feel good. And if that is vampire, werewolf, smut, power to you. <laughs> so those are uh, my rankings and reviews of what I have read so far this month. As I'm filming this, there is still a week left in March. So we'll see where uh, Shawshank Redemption slides in there. And then also another book I'm reading right now because I I sometimes will do like one book on audiobook and one book that I'm reading, but at the same time I'm listening to American Prometheus, which is the Robert Oppenheimer biography. Very, very interesting. I just watched Oppenheimer and I was like, kind of feel like I should read the book now, and it's a long book. So again, kind of like with Sapiens, I feel like I'm best suited to to listen to those on audiobook, not binge read it slowly over time. Um, so I'm a couple hours into that one, but it's a 26 hour audio book so probably won't finish that one this month um but the other fun thing is uh every month for book club someone's name gets picked at random to pick the next book and uh we find out a couple days before so that that person can like decide on a book and present it to everyone at the next meeting and my name was pulled this week so after much deliberation i've decided to go with pachinko by min jin lee it's a historical fiction book about four generations of a korean family that's living in japan and i have heard it is just amazing. It's one of those books that really sticks with you. It has so many five-star reviews. So I hope it's a good pick. I, I feel like a little nervous wanting to make sure I picked a good book for the group. I think it's a good pick. I hope it is. Um, if you've read this book, let me know what you think in the comments. And really, if you've read any of the books that I just talked about, uh, leave your opinion in the comments. I am very excited to read through. And that is everything I have to say about my current reading habits. So I am off to book club. I'll see you later. Good morning. It is Saturday, barely morning, 11 a.m. <laughs> you want to play that I'm Prince Eric and you come help me with a flower? Yeah. And I have a crab on my foot? Sure, we could play that. Ooh, ow! There's a crab on my foot. I need a magic flower to heal it. Does anyone have a magic flower? Steven uh, watched Grace this morning and I slept in until almost 10 o'clock, which was so glorious. Like I couldn't believe it when I looked at the clock when I woke up. So when once I got up, I was like, you go take some me time. He's upstairs playing video games for an hour and then we're gonna get into our Saturday, which is basically gonna consist of a, a bunch of baby prep things that we're gonna try to check off the list. Is that my magic flower? You got the magic flowers? There's a, there's a, there's a For me? Yeah. Thank you. I'm saved. Thank you, Ariel. Also, in addition to some baby prep stuff, I think we're gonna do a little gardening today and transfer the onions and the cantaloupe into the raised beds. This is, a this is the cantaloupe right here, the big green leafy ones. And then the jalapenos and the tomatoes, I think still need a couple more weeks. And we started some more tomatoes and some more flowers just a couple days ago in these ones, because like almost none of the flower seedlings took in the first round. So I figured we'd try again. Woo, all righty. I was upstairs, I was enjoying some game time. Grace had woken up, so. Um, Sarah's like, you know what, go enjoy some good time. Um, but while I was up there, I have started washing these guys. Uh, so we have Grace's old infant car seat and the uh, bassinet for the stroller. So I take it, I took all the fabrics off. Um, I have them upstairs in the wash and then I'm gonna hang dry them all. I'm doing that, Sierra's doing like all this laundry shenanigans that I kind of help shuttle upstairs and downstairs. That's it. We're also renting the snoo again. So that should be here in the next week or so. And after that, we kind of just wait, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm mentally in a very interesting spot with this second kid. It's like, I feel ready. I'm very nervous, but I'm not nervous. And I don't know if that's all gonna change, which it most certainly will, I bet, when baby girl's here, so. We have figured out everything up to this point, so I'm sure we'll figure this out. So I kind of feel confident is how I'd kind of, scared but confident. That's a good summary. There's probably more to do. I think we want to tidy up some different stuff. Um, I think some target runs, specifically for like baby things. Like I think 
We, we like having just a box of formula just ready to go in case we need it. What's up, pretty girl? You want me to come hang out with you? Okay, I'll come hang out with you. Can I just say bye to the camera? Do you want to say bye with me? Yeah. Okay, come here, pretty girl. Bye! Say bye! bye. Peace! Bye-bye! Bye-bye! <laughs>